Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition to the Point Podcast. Hope everyone's doing well on this Tuesday. Beautiful weather. I was having a you know, pretty okay day. Tuesday, no feel, but again, not a lot. Of, I don't have a lot of feels. Uh, and until we get the news about the COVID restrictions, which really set me off, which if you know me, that can happen quite easily. But I am happy because I'm here on a Tuesday with my good friend Seamus and Shay. I know you're doing a lot of uh, learning this week. You learned what you, you informed me about the new COVID restrictions. How are you doing with all this new information this week? Oh, it could be better. I know uh, things things can always be a little brighter, but you're right. The sun's out, and uh, no, just just doing a little bit of training this week, keeping it pretty light. Happy to see you not once, not twice, but hopefully three times if yeah, everything right. goes accordingly yeah. this week. So yeah, no, I'm pumped, pumped about that. And uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not too happy, but uh, at the same time, got to do what you got to do. We got to get back to uh, where we were. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, but I guess the best thing we can say is we got a AL wildcard game tonight, which should be good. Uh, yeah, Red Sox, really good game. Uh, great pitching matchup. Uh, you can be tuning into that tonight or Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll choose the latter. Uh, me yeah. and my boy writes, you know, we, you know, we love our BIP. Um, no, I, I, uh, I'll be watching some of it for sure. One of the, one of the greatest rivalries in sports and, uh, mm-hmm. no, you, I don't know if you've said it already, but do you have an opinion on, uh, who's, who's going on to play, uh, the Rays? Um, I think uh, for some reason, I think the Red Sox are going to win tonight, even though the Yankees, I think, I mean, you got Garrett Cole in the mound, you paid him 300 million. He should be able to give you a seven innings. Like none of this five inning crap that we see now, or, you know, tonight it's pull out all the stops, but I like the Red Sox bats are more consistent than the Yankees. I know you're, you, you don't like your boy, Raphael Devers, but the guy is a flat out stud crushing dingers. Uh, no J.D. Martinez, which hurts uh, for the Red Sox, but Bogarts, Devers, Kike Hernandez from, from your Dodgers has been a really sneaky good ad for, for the Red Sox. So I think it's going to be close. Uh, I think, you know, it's a baseball game, probably go four, four and a half hours tonight. So it might be a late one for, for the both of us, but I think we will see an entertaining game this evening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like you said, as long as Cole's on his game and maybe Boston throws him off and because uh, he seems like he's easily agitated as long as you get a couple of decent hits in. So, no, it, it's looking forward to that. And then obviously uh, tomorrow night, my Dodgers play St. Louis. So I'm, I'm very I'll be staying up for that one for for certain. But uh, mm-hmm. no, hopefully they can pull it off. And uh, yeah, we can see San Francisco. What's your confidence meter in that game? Um. One just ten. based off of history with St. Louis, not not too too bad. I'm I'm about a seventy percent, I would say. Okay, yeah, yeah no, another good. great pitching matchup. Two uh, wily yeah. vets, Wainwright forty, Scherzer thirty seven, uh, mm-hmm. but both are still pitching at their best. You know, Wainwright had a hell of a season in St. Louis. What they did, mm-hmm. winning nineteen to twenty one. That's a, this is where baseball gets interesting. Okay, like 162 is long. Like I, I, I go through the first 20 games where I'm like, okay, I'm interested. I tail off for like 30 and then I come back. But in the next three weeks, we'll crown a World Series champion. But baseball playoffs, you get afternoon games. This is when it gets fun. Yeah, exactly. If you if you're a fan of you know the sport, you know that September is a great month for for mm-hmm. anyone, or, or not even September because I mean now we're in playoffs. But September, I guess the race is on, and yeah. I'm sure everyone was glued into the to the AL East. Um, you know that that crazy wild card um, race, and yeah, mm-hmm. not like you said. Now I'm looking looking forward to October because it's gonna be a great month of uh, baseball on so, top yeah, of hockey a- returning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh- Kicking off a week tonight uh, with uh, the Penguins at the reigning two-time defending champions, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, and then the Kraken open up their franchise in Las Vegas. The two recent expansion teams will play a week from this evening. But today, we are going to be talking about Breaking Bad. You mentioned tomorrow you'll be back uh, with myself and Casey Ward to talk NHL season preview, which I'm looking forward to. Um and I'll throw this one to you right now. I didn't tell you this before, but pick a team that you're interested in watching this year that people really wouldn't expect, or maybe just a team that you want to watch. Oh, other that, than your normal that, Leafs, because that that doesn't count. Because I no, yeah, I, 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 I always want to watch them. All eighty two um, of them, but just 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 a team that's you know, interesting. They don't they don't potentially got to win the cup, but just an interesting team that you look forward to watching. I'll throw that one at I, you today. 
I think with the changes, I'm I'm looking forward to watching Philly play. I just think they've made some like really good changes on the back end, and I'm just interested to see if Carter Hurt is, yeah. you know, if that was just a, a, a down season and he comes back, or if maybe this is a consistent thing where he finds himself out of the league in three years. So no, I I, I think that's that's good good change, and I think they can be competitive. I actually think they could go pretty deep in the playoffs as long as they get there. But no, some interesting factors going on in, in there. So that's probably my squad. What about uh, what about you? What do you Think I'm that's going to say it for course. tomorrow. I'll say oh, it okay. for tomorrow. Um, Did me dirty there. No, I thought you, I just told, I thought I said, bring it tomorrow kind of thing. Dude. Oh, oh, yeah. my bad. I thought you, I thought you said, okay, never mind. But yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you a little sneak peek of what's going to happen. Yeah, tomorrow, then. we'll, we'll, we'll reabsorb it tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we'll do it again. Yeah. Tomorrow. My, my, I had my team picked. I just thought about it yesterday and I think it'll surprise some people, but I'll try to sell on why this team is interesting might not be the best team but i think it'll be interesting to watch but today we talk we're talking about seasons uh season four episodes six and seven of breaking bad um really heading into these episodes the main plot points are walter and skylar purchasing the car wash uh walter trying to kill gustavo uh jesse and mike are now working uh in co and um before this episode shay we saw that Mike was inside a Los Polos Hermanos truck and he stopped these two men from really, you know, breaking in and stealing valuable property. And this episode starts in a similar fashion with two men inside the, the coal truck, but it did not go as well for these two guys. Yeah. Seems to be like a common theme where they're kind of basically safeguarding their, uh, their product to and from their locations. And you know, now, now that they're getting pulled over and obviously they're getting robbed by um, the cartel, they mm-hmm. thought they'd arm up with two other guys, but instead of, you know, just shooting at the the truck like they did last time, uh, the cartel kind of outwits them and um, they end up taking the exhaust and taking a hose and putting it into the back and basically suffocating the two, the two guys in there and locking, locking them in, basically killing them. And they, they get in there and they, they take the, I guess they look around. They they're smart enough to know they have the little their little green or what's that called? Little white light is it called? No, what am I thinking uh, of? It's a, a blue light. Blue, yeah, they're blue lighting all all the bins of the batter, and then they finally mm-hmm. find the one with the uh, with this with the blue stuff in it, and they take it away. And it's kind of a, a cruel scene. They're just kind of sitting there eating sandwiches, watching these guys kind of perish. Yeah, it kind of tells you. Uh cartel i mean obviously I mean you've watched a lot of these shows what these guys are like you know they mm-hmm. uh this with the sopranos and different shows we know they don't have a whole lot they don't have big hearts and uh <laughs> the, these guys did need that you mentioned eating their eating their sandwiches like on billy madison uh with the damn sasquatch and they're watching these two men try to you know shoot their way out of this you know getting you yeah. know, killed um we pivot to, to skylar and walt and walt in the last episode <laughs> got a good got a good stupor on he had a couple bottles of wine and in that moment he said something stupid he said to hank that i don't think you got your heisenberg it's not gail bedecker that he's copying notes like this guy's a copycat and it alerted hank to okay maybe it's not gail maybe i'm missing something and it, it changed hank's mentality but walt wakes up uh, shed the bed and he has no idea that he's done this yeah, he looks like me about every Friday and Sunday. Um, <laughs> pretty, pretty hurting unit. So no, he's, you know, Skylar wakes him up and, you know, she's pissed. She's like, do you even know what you said last night? Kind of gives him the the scold. And of course he's, you know, he's unaware, like you said, of, you know, anything that he said. And he, you know, his ego just got the best of him, like you said, and he starts blabbering. And of course he doesn't think it's as big of a deal. But obviously Skylar kind of is aware of the situation and because, you know, she knows they have to keep this, this image of very low key. And more importantly, they just got to keep Hank from getting on this trail again. Like he thought he found his guy. He thought he was done. And like you said, Walter just put him right back on track as as we've seen the last episode where he's digging through there at the case file again. Right. And she even asked if, if he knew Gail and then asked if she knew who killed Gail, which obviously he knows mm-hmm. that it's Jesse. And he kind of asked if he was next. And she, and she pieces together 
he left that ans- that message on the answering machine that was really yeah, that's right you know incriminating and she took it as oh he's so sentimental he's a family guy again uh but she goes i think you said that to me because you were scared for your life that you were fearing for your life which he was and he takes this completely the wrong way and he starts lashing out at skylar in a really uh negative way yeah he you know he's clearly really hung over but he's also his ego would like you said before just getting the most of them and you know he he both him and jesse drop iconic lines i think throughout the whole show this episode and then the next but this one of course being being huge where you know he's he's up and he's basically getting changed he's getting ready to get in the shower and you know sky says you know you're, are you in danger like is someone going to open up our door mm. and you know you know kill you uh you know pull pull that trigger and Walter just kind of turns around and, you know, this is great acting by Brian Cranston. Yeah. He basically, he's, he's not screaming, but he's yelling, we'll say. And he's basically saying, you know, who, who do you think I am? The guy who gets shot, the guy who, you know, the guy who gets, no, no I am the guy who knocks. I am the one who pulls the trigger. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's a lot, a lot of, you know, enthusiasm and a lot of, you know, his ego just being pulled out. You really see Heisenberg in this instead of Walter. Yeah, completely. He says, I, I'm not in danger. I am the danger. And it, it's stupid line to say to a woman, uh, number one, especially your wife. You're not yeah. going to get any brownie points there. And uh, maybe I'm saying that too often, being the single guy here on the podcast. But um, yeah, so he goes to shower. And when he gets out, she's gone. Car's gone. Holly's gone. And he has no idea where she is. So he can't do a whole lot about it. So he goes to meet with Bogdan at the car wash. And this is another mm-hmm. interesting scene where, you know, he tells, you know, you can't be lazy to work here, Bogdan saying, and you can't just be incompetent and stupid. And, you know, you know, and Walt, if you're not tough enough to do it, you can always ask your pretty wife to come down here and do it for you. Are you surprised that he's so reserved during this? I, 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 totally forgot about this scene but he's very you know very calm very reserved like obviously he's you know he's like whatever but I think he's just taking it all in because he knows Bogdan is so upset that he has to give it over to him yeah I think in the back of his mind he's kind of um channeling Skylar and he would know like okay I'm gonna piss her off more by doing this like you know acting out so to speak but also he does get a, get him back at the end because Bogdan is saying throughout as is and there's this dollar bill in, in a picture frame on the wall, and Bogdan goes to grab it. It's clearly his first sale. And Walter says, whoa, 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 Bogdan, as is. And he grabs the frame out of his hands. Another it's, it's a gr- type moment. Oh, it's a greasy move when you yeah. think about it. Because that was totally totally his. And But like you said, they have this, this bad this relationship, this kind of battered relationship where they don't like each other. And you're right, Bogdan's basically like, you have to be a hard ass. Little does he know, I, I don't think we know a, a more hard ass person than, than Walter is. He's kind of the strict, you know, science teacher slash can be a, a brutal dick sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, can you imagine working for someone like that? Yeah. Um, we'll pivot to Jesse quickly here. Um, I thought this was going to be a throwaway scene, but then it ties together later in the episode, I think, Shay. Jesse and Mike go to a diner and we see Jake, uh, Jesse's having a coffee, but throughout he's shaking and clearly he's coming, coming off the drugs. And he he mentions that how he's, he's not using, but Mike actually, you know, shares food with him and gets him. Yeah. And he kind of, they get a call and and they leave, but he does show, show him some compassion and clearly Jesse is off. He's not using anymore. Yeah, yeah, we know that that he's he's so busy that he can't even he doesn't have, probably have time to use yeah. or enjoy it, I guess. And yeah, Mike Mike shows him some compassion, like you said, and kind of evolving their relationship. Mike's not a, a soft guy by any means, but at least he's you know he's willing to help him, and he obviously knows what kind of situation that Jesse's in. Right. So, uh, Walt, you know, he's been through a lot here, uh, and he goes to meet with Jesse asking him you know why 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 are you working with mike like it doesn't make any mm-hmm. sense why you he goes you're a bodyguard you know and, you know it doesn't make it says you know you know what you know what walt they got me off drugs i'm not using anymore 
They trust me. I save Mike. Like, but Walt, Walt's smart. And he says, you know what? Mm-hmm. They set it up. They set it up, Jesse. They didn't, you didn't save Mike. They stopped tailing you after a little while. And he basically just telling Jesse, like, you didn't do anything. They did this just to get you away from me and pulling them over to Gustavo's side of things. Yeah. He even, you know, he even says this was never about you. It was all about me, which yeah. I think really, really pisses Jesse off because obviously he feels like he really did a lot to help in that, mm-hmm. t- in that scenario. But you're right, Walter, you know, clearly brilliant for putting that together. And, you know, battle of the minds, like we keep saying between Gus and uh, Walter, because obviously every, every move that, you know, Gus does, I think Walter has some sort of idea of what's going on behind it. And what it's used for, obviously, because he need, he knows if he can cut out Jesse, then he can easily get rid of Walter. Yes, exactly. And yeah, if, if Jesse's okay with Walter dying, then it's not a problem. You know, Walter can go and you can forget about him. Jesse can cook. He can do it. He can work with Ty- uh, Tyrus, whoever. Mm-hmm. So um, Skyler has been gone multiple days. Uh, now, you know, there. Well, Junior and, and Walt are eating breakfast the next morning. She's still not home. And J- Junior kind of knows where she is. You got to assume she's at Hank and Marie's or something like that. But he goes, yeah, you know, she's mad. And, you know, she can't be mad at you, Dad, about the gambling. And, uh, you know, that you, you can't control that. And clearly he's, uh, he's still on his father's side, even though Walter's been the bane of of everyone's existence in this family, uh, whether they know it or not. Yeah. So, you know, I'm driving, driving, even driving to, uh, back driving to school. Yeah. Walter Jr. Says, you know, are, are you, you're not actually moving in. Are you? And Walter goes no, uh, because you know, at this point doesn't, doesn't seem hopeful. And, you know, he goes, ah, let's, let's take a pit stop and let's, let's go, let's take a, you know, you can, school can wait for now. And they go to a used car sale. And you know, this is a great scene because Walter Jr. So, this is, I think this is what most kids would do in this scenario. I'm not yeah. really thinking, but going, Hey, you know, if you're, if you're going to buy me off, you know, buy me off big. And, yeah. you know, he looks up at the billboard and it's a, it's a red charger. Yeah. So he buys him the brand new Dodge charger and it's a gorgeous vehicle. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you, know, you think of the General Lee and things of that nature, but the, yeah, these beautiful car, but you look at their home, it's very working class. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Walt drives, uh, an Aztec, uh, she drives a station wagon, but you know, he wanted it and Walt, this is not smart parenting. If you do want to get back with your wife, because she, you know, she's not going to be happy with this. And I don't think mm-hmm. Walt, Walt was just trying to get back at her in this moment yeah i love how that they made a red too juggy it's kind of mm-hmm. like a it, they're kind of making it like a target like they know they know it sticks out like a sore thumb like right. if they were making some generic color like black or something it's not as bad but red is like a real you know it's a real eyesore you can say and yeah no like you said it, it comes up a little later on between conversation but you know it makes skylar look bad because you know it's walter being the loving caring father and skylar being the the bitch mom who you know just ends up ruining everything and uh, in the eyes of walter jr right and so i guess we'll go to skylar this is an interesting scene um in new mexico there's this monument where there's the four different uh you know uh states it connects new mexico colorado arizona and utah and Skylar's there with Holly and she starts flipping a coin. And I believe both of them land on Colorado, which is interesting. But mm-hmm. she, after the second flip, she drags the coin back to New Mexico, kind of symboling that she's going to stick around. But it's this interesting scene where she's kind of like trying to decide on her future. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Kind of, this, this kind of reminds me of, you remember the movie, the, the, Bad Times at the El Royale, I think it's yes. called that John yeah. Hamm movie. It was really, it wasn't really that great, but yeah, yeah, this, I think this is where this took place. And I mean, it is a really cool location, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Skylar, like you said, she drags the coin back to Mexico and I don't think she could just up and leave Walter Jr. I think no. if it was just the three of them, well, Holly and Walter Jr. and herself, I think she could do something like that, but no, she just doesn't, she doesn't feel like she could leave him, uh, leave him behind and kind of leave him in right. that mess. Cause 
she at this point all she really knows is that walter is kind of this egotistic kind of maniac because of the way uh their last conversation went right and he could if junior was on her side she could maybe sell it to him you know that he, yeah. he didn't like walter maybe it's an easy but she knows he's never going to betray his father so mm-hmm. it's kind of a lost cause and we, we see her kind of leave um so we get back to the lab jesse and walter are actually working together for once they cook and they're about to clean but walt uh, they get a call and jesse says i gotta go and walt's furious and he's like Mm-hmm. I got to clean this whole place by myself. He's looking up at the cameras. So he's in a defiant mood. He defied Skyler. He's, he's doing, you know, he defied logic buying junior, a uh, <laughs> you know, brand new vehicle. So he goes upstairs and he starts talking to the Hispanic cleaning ladies who hardly know any English, but he buys them off into going down and cleaning the meth lab. Yeah, it's it's a hilarious scene because they're just sitting there chatting. He's just sipping on coffee, and he kind of gives the the cheer sign to the camera, saying, "Hot, like if you, you want to screw if you want to screw me over, I'm going to screw you over even mm-hmm. more." But it doesn't work out well in his favor as he as you know as he brings them back upstairs. Tyrese makes uh, an appearance and kind of says he said something in Spanish, and they're on a bus and they're going back to um, Nigeria. No. Honduras. 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 They're going back to Honduras. So in the end, you know, Walter kind of feels like this is entirely his fault. Yeah. And he even says, you know, don't don't punish them, punish me. And Tyrese looks at him and says, This is punishing you. Yeah, we are because he knows it's he messed up. Yeah, and he knows it it hurt him. You know, how, how could it not? I mean, this was completely selfish and an innocent, innocent women, you know, getting to the United States. And I guess, in a sense, this was them showing Gus that he couldn't trust them because they just listened to some random guy who flashed them fifty True. bucks, right? So yeah, and they've also seen too much now. They've they've you know they've been exposed to the lab where if someone were to you know say they had some leverage in some scenario. Well, obviously they could use that information in their favor. Well, that's you know that's a great reason for Gus to get rid of them. Yes, no, I completely agree. Um, so then we go to Mike and Jesse on their on their work call, and they're basically sitting watching a house. And this is in another dingy neighborhood, kind of like Mister Spooge back in the day. This is not exactly uh, high class, but Mike says a, a little birdie told him that a you know a pair of meth heads have three pounds of their product. Don't know how it, they got there, but they're gonna wait till they come out and take it from them. Uh, but Jesse says, "Why don't we just?" why don't I just go buy meth? Like, why don't we just go deal with it? And, you know, Mike basically says, cause we're dealing with unpredictable people. Yeah. And you know, Mike, Mike's all about safe and all about calculated moves. And Jesse says, no, no, I'm not waiting. So he kind of goes up and we meet Tucker. Um, one of the two, the two gentlemen and, you know, Tucker's kind of this younger, but skinny guy, obviously he's been, he's been doing a lot of meth recently. Yeah. Um, and he says, you know, let me buy some for me. Let me just a teens. I'll just buy a teens. Mm-hmm. And Tucker's like, no. And from the background, you can hear this screaming voice going, Tucker, yes, close the door. Yeah. So clearly these, these guys are, one guy is super paranoid and Tucker is clearly the, we'll say the dealer in this scenario. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he won't tell him to him, won't tell him to him, tell him, tells him to buzz off. And, you know, yeah. Mike lets him hear it as he arrives back to the car. Yeah. It's a funny scene where Mike just goes. Okay, back to plan A. Uh, and but yeah, one thing I noticed, Shay, is you gotta be hooked on meth because you look terrible when you when you do it. Mm. Like if you're an addict, all the scabs and like it's disgusting, man. Yeah, it's uh yeah, I think it's a I mean like, to me, I just think about all the chemicals that they use mm. and like I not that I know many of them clearly, but when they're in the lab making all this stuff, it just, it just, I mean, that's what you're putting in your body, like into your system, like must just eat away at you. But yeah, no, clearly it's highly addictive because these guys, like many of the homes we've seen kind of just trash, you know, furniture everywhere, garbage everywhere. And, you know, looks, looks like they haven't slept or, you know, looks like they haven't Mm -hmm. bathed in weeks. Yeah. And, you know, Jesse says, you know what, you know, you, you think, you know, people, but I know, I know methods and he tries mm-hmm. something else. He gets a shovel and, you know, and the first time I watch this, I'm like, what the hell is he going to do to yeah. you know, bash these guys heads in? No, he, he goes in the front yard and he starts digging a hole. 
And this gains the interest of, you know, our previously mentioned Tucker, who comes outside and says, you know, what are you, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm just, just digging. You know, you know what I'm doing. And, you know, this keeps piques the interest of Tucker and he go, and Jesse goes, do you, you want to help me out? And he also starts digging. And this is a way for Jesse to get into the house to see kind of what's going on and see what the activities are like inside. So he gets inside. We see the disaster that is that house. You have garbage, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, everywhere. And he rounds the corner and we see this lovely guy with uh, stabs all over his face, clearly tweaking out. He's got a pump shotgun over his shoulder and he's just, Tucker, Tucker, the whole time. And he goes, hey, hey, no, hey, Tucker's outside. I'm just looking to buy some. He goes, I don't sell the Tucker's loser friends. And he goes, no, like, I, I just want a team. And he goes, and this guy is so messed up and he, he, is, it, yeah. he is so out of it and just says, no, I don't want any trouble. And he goes, what trouble? Yeah. <laughs> he's, cl- yeah, he's only hearing words. Yeah. He can only hear the one word and he goes, no, no, no trouble. He goes, what, what do you mean trouble? And he goes, stop putting thoughts in my head. And just, <laughs> just and he's got the gun on him at this point, but the hearing noise inside and Jesse makes a quick move on him you know, hits him over the head with the weapon and oh, oh comes around the corner is Mike. Yeah. Mike it's ultimately saves, uh, saves him, but in the same sense, you know, may, maybe could have got him killed too. And you think about it, Yeah. but, uh, they, they get the product and on, on the, I guess, um, the, on the bucket, I guess with the batter, it says, mm-hmm. uh, in Spanish, uh, ready to talk. Mm-hmm. So this was clearly a message sent by the cartel who stole this and gave it, this, gave this to these guys. Um, and knew Mike or somebody from Gus's clan would end up uh, swooping it back up. Right. Yeah. They clearly gave it to these guys and planted information so that they would get the, you know, get the idea of what they're doing. So Gus actually went to a diner with Mike and Jesse. Jesse leaves the table when, when Gus gets there, but he kind of asks him, you know, Jesse kind of asks him like, why me? Like, and he kind of goes, you know, I just, I see things in people and, it's kind of a good moment for Jesse to kind of hear from the boss that he's, you know, trusted and he's part of the, the organization now. Yeah. And we find it a little bit more in this about why, you know, what, what Gus was talking about. Cause he was really, he was really vague. We'll say mm-hmm. in this, in this scenario, but yeah, and we, you know, it's, it's a relay and obviously it's um, Mike, uh, Mike was telling Gus basically, you know, this, this is what the cartel did. You know, how, how do you want to respond? Let me, let me take these guys out once and for all, yeah. but Gus chooses, he doesn't like we've seen before. He says, I don't, I don't motivate with fear and he wants to sit down and meet with these guys. Yeah. So he tells Mike to set up a meeting and, and we'll get to that in the next episode, but we do still have to wrap up this Skylar Walt. Um, mm-hmm. It starts with Skylar returning while they're having dinner. Uh, Junior's excited to see her and, you know, just, look at the car like dad got for me and he's so excited and he he goes for for a little ride and walt says you know family is completely safe and everything he, he does is per, to protect this family and you mentioned iconic lines this is what i think skylar really had one of her coming out moments of the show as well where she goes the car's protection First of all, it goes back tomorrow. It's a bullseye. It contradicts our entire story, which is true. Like you said earlier, Mm -hmm. what about, you know, what about the IRS, Hank, Marie, like, how are they going to know this? And she says, Walt says, well, what if he blames you? And she says, he will. I'm still a bitch mother that took his car away, but somebody has to protect this family from the man who protects this family. A mic drop moment from Skylar to wrap up this episode. Yeah, she, she comes out with once in a while with some great ending lines to episodes. Mm-hmm. This one, you think of the the you know I I fucked head line. Yeah, at, yeah that's true. Yeah. That was good, and and also when uh, I think it's the end of season one when she you know she basically says she catches um, mm-hmm. she catches Walter and his web of lies. You know all, all all great moments that come at the end of episodes. So nice little theme, and you're right. That's that's a that's a mic drop if I've ever heard one, and it's a it's a fantastic line by uh, the writers who who put that in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they clearly is still not on good terms here, but she's still going to the monument, flipping the coin. She still knows she has to work with them for now. Yeah. She has to deal with it. Probably in her brain thinking, I got to deal with Walt till the cancer comes back. That might sound gruesome, but I think that's kind of how she thinks. 
Yeah. And besides that, there's really, there's no end point, I guess, to, yeah. to all of this, because I mean, she, she might be thinking, you know, we can all die at any day or, you know, this could go on for quite a while. So she's just kind of planning for the future in case, uh, in case hopefully it's the latter. Right. Uh, so that pivots us to episode seven entitled problem dog. Uh, love the title. Um, so we, it starts with Jesse. He's at his house. It looks like he's starting to clean it up. There's still a lot of graffiti in that, but we do see him that he's taking more. Uh, he's starting to be more cleanliness. His hygiene's better. And he's starting to get, in a, you know, he's not using anymore, which is a big part of you know, obviously getting your life back together, but he's playing this video game. And it's basically, you got a gun in your hand. It's kind of like a, it kind of reminded me of a Wii game, Shags. You used to, you know, you had the tennis racket in your hand or, or golfing or whatnot. And he's basically killing zombies. But every time he pulls the trigger, we see the, the camera cut to him shooting Gale. And to me, this was kind of, number one, he's still dealing with it. But also you, to, to deal with it, you got to, who pass it, maybe shooting a gun, killing something other than Gale is his way of kind of moving past that terrible situation. Yeah, because we even see, we even see at the end when you know we'll, we'll say his character dies, he can leave the game, but he actually chooses to go through with it. So it's all you're right. It is kind of like him, you know, work, working through his problems mm -hmm. in in a way that's not you know abusive to his own health. We'll say because yeah. before he'd probably just do a line or you know rip up a bowl, but now he's actually kind of dealing with, with a different state. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good and bad at the same time, because I think, I think it's bringing up some bad memories for him, but at yeah. the same time, if he's able to work through it, then, then it's helping him. Yeah. Um, we then pivot to Walt and I, I love this scene because I would, this, this would be fun to do, uh, just, you know, oh, if, yeah. you, if you could afford it. Um, so Walt has to bring the challenger back, but he hears from Skylar that the dealership doesn't have to take it back because they just sold it. They said they'll give him $800 for this vehicle that is at least $60,000, if not more. Those are expensive mm -hmm. vehicles. So what does he do? Takes it to an empty parking lot for some drifts, some burnouts, donuts, an empty parking lot, but he loses control and the front end of the, of the charger goes over you know, the, the ramp slash, you know, barricade but you know to mark a a parking spot so that's over the front end and even that's kind of the middle stuck there the front ends in this little minor little ditch area and it's he can't get out without assistance and we just see he's kind of fed up yeah instead of you know maybe doing the logical thing like calling a tow truck or <laughs> someone to get him unstuck he, it's like so funny he grabs the paperwork for the vehicle he shoves it into the gas can and uh he de he decides to light that bitch up and he does this funny scene where he walks away and he's on phone with the cab and he's like yeah you know i'm in i'm in so-and-so parking lot and you know the cab must have asked him are we gonna be able to see you and just as he says that the the charger just goes into flames and he says yeah he you should be able to spot me yeah in all safety like obviously i don't want to see a, a car wreck but it would be fun to see a car explode pretty close to you oh yeah 100 percent. we've all thought of explosion about it. like that i think that would be pretty yeah cool. Yeah. If, if everyone was safe, I mean, it would be, yeah. it would be something to see for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Safety. Uh, nobody cares about safety more than me in this world. And I, <laughs> I want it all safe. I want it. Yeah. But that would be, I, that'd be fun for me anyway, to see some demolition and stuff like that. So Walt goes to see Saul, of course, his lawyer, and he's getting some charges, uh, you know, root blowing up his vehicle in a public place doing all of this you know reckless yeah. abandon all this. it's going to cost him 52 grand uh just for what he did he doesn't care he just tells salt you take care of it or what he's just sitting there and but while he's there he saul's kind of asking about mike because he's still scared of him because he tried to beat him up a little while ago and walt says well i can't get to gus but maybe you can help me get to Gus. Yeah. Yeah. He says, you know, we could hire a guy, you know, a, a good guy from somewhere hit man and we'll, we'll take him out. And, you know, Saul is like, no, we, we can't do that. All the guys I know are, you know, are, are from Mike and Mike obviously works for Gus. 
And he's like, even if we did, we'd have to be absolutely sure. Or, you know, we're, we're asses or toast. And, you know, Walter goes, well, there must be some way we can get close to him. And Saul says, well, why don't you just ask your partner? And that's when we find, that's when Walter finds out that, you know, Jesse's been in close contact with Gus and they kind of have a little, little meet before, uh, I guess, I, no, what, what, I kind of forget where they he, meet he now. He drives to, to Jesse's and Jesse's uh, painting. Oh, painting, yes. Uh, and yeah, he's painting, he's cleaning, cleaning his house, doing things like that. And he kind of asks him, he says, yeah, no, I saw him at a diner and, you know, we, he was there with Mike and he, he says, you know, I see him every once in a while. And Walt says, he's playing games with you. I mean, how could he, how could he think that you trust him again? Gail, Andrea's younger brother. How, do you, do you think he'd forget what, mm-hmm. what, what he did to you? And yeah, it's he's trying a, to get him worked up. Yeah. It's such a, such a transparent sales pitch. And Jesse's yeah. like, okay, just cut the shit. Okay. I'll do it. And yeah. Walt's like, what? He says, I'll kill him. Yeah, and this is this is kind of surprising because it seemed like, you know, with the praise that he got in the last episode and you know how close he's been with Mike, you wouldn't really think he would you'd be up for something like this. But, you know, I th- I think Jesse's still in that state of mind, like, okay, this this is still a threat, and you know, mm-hmm. these guys still kind of want me dead if they if they could. And he kind of offers it up. Mm-hmm. And well, this kind of solves Walter's problem of, you know, who's gonna who's gonna do my dirty work for me. Yeah, and he kind of says, I'll kill him the first chance I get. And, you know, we don't know when that's going to be. But that that's a big moment for Walt where he's like, oh, great. You know, I can get rid of this problem and it, I can it, we're going to be off scot-free. So he goes to the car wash. And we see how Walt is bringing the money into the store, which is pretty, pretty cool and, and smart. He's hiding the cash under uh, two, four cases of pop that, you know, of Coke and, and whatnot Sprite that he's bringing in. And basically every two weeks, he's going to be bringing in $217,000. And, you know, Skylar did not know how much money he made to this point, but she, you know, does the calculations and she goes, you make over $7 million a year. And he's just mm-hmm. kind of like, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> but this is a problem obviously because you know the for one the car wash would make that at all in, no. in a year so you know obviously if you're going to money launder you have to have some kind of consistency with the general with you know how much money you generate from from there and another problem is that they're all 50 dollars bills which mm-hmm. uh which you know no one pays for car washes in 50s and you know skylar kind of complained she said you know this this is going to be a major issue for us but Walter says, you know, you, you signed up for this. You have to, you have to deal with this. Like I, I was on the understanding you could handle this fully. And, you know, Skylar kind of swallows her pride and, you know, proceeds to put the money away. Yeah. She's got to deal with it because that's the way it is. And he goes, I didn't want to do this in the first place. So, you know, chew on this. Um, so meanwhile, back at the lab, Walt, Walt's in a cocky attitude, these two episodes. So he's working, but at the same time, he's at the lab yeah. where Gus's lab, and he makes some ricin, which if you can remember from the earlier seasons, they tried to poison Tuco with ricin. And basically, yeah. you put it in somebody's water or food. They, it has no taste, so it doesn't become obvious. It doesn't make you want to go to uh, the hospital. But if you... If you have ricin in your system, you'll die within 36 hours. And, you know, Walt basically says, put this in his food or drink. We're going to get off scot-free. Maybe Mike will suspect something, but he'll have no proof to say that it was either one of us. Yeah. So just Jesse's like, well, you know, I don't know when the next time we'll see him. And, you know, he has to have, have it on him at all times. So what does he do? He shoves it into a cigarette because he always has a carton on him. And you know, he just turns one upside down and, you know, that's, that's his lucky, lucky dart. So the next time he has it, he's going to be able to use it. Um, and obviously we see pretty, pretty shortly he gets an opportunity. Yeah. Um, prior to this, we see Hank again and Hank mm-hmm. is becomes more of a focal point in this episode. Him and junior go to Los Polos Hermanos. And we do see that Hank is getting better with it, with his PT. Um, he's walking with, with a walker. He, you know, he's not in bed anymore. He is getting better. Obviously he's still, uh, 
very restricted in his movement, but he can he can walk. And him and it's kind of a nice moment with Junior on the crutches, him with the walker, these two, you know, getting along. But oddly enough, they're eating the chicken in the restaurant, having a good old time, talking about how the car's gone. Junior's pissed off. But Gus comes to say hi to Hank. You know, he loves his DA agents, tells him he'll never pay for a meal in here. And he even asks, you know, can I give you anything? And Hank says, yeah, you know, Diet Coke would be great. And uh, when he brings it back, Hank dumps out the, the Diet Coke and keeps the cup and puts it in an evidence bag. Yeah, so we, we know that he's he's got suspicions. Clearly, there's no, you know, you wouldn't do that for no reason. Mm-hmm. And we, if, just to recap from last week, the only thing that caught Hank's eye really from Gail's apartment was the Los Polos, um, the Los Polos bag that he found in Gail's apartment. And, you know, he thought that was strange, obviously, because Gail was a vegan. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where, where we're stemming from this. But obviously... Hank is very, even though he's not on the radar, he's not working for the DEA. He's very much committed to, you know, still solving this case. Right. Yeah. So he, yeah, he's still very much involved. He wants to get, I'd want to get him too. I mean, it's just his personality, but he's been working so long at at getting this guy that, you know, he needs to do it. So Mike picks up Jesse and they're driving. And he goes, well, what are we doing today? He goes, today's lesson is eyes open, mouth shut. And they get to the familiar meeting place where uh, Jesse and Walter met the the two men that killed Andrea's younger brother, uh, where they had the kind of peace and reconciliation meeting. Um, and we just see uh, Mike show him some love. Uh, Jesse is, is making coffee. And he's thinking about drugging Gus. He has that opportunity to do it. But as he's making the coffee, dumping in the water, you know, pulls out his pack of cigarettes, Mike gives him a gun. And he says, if you're going to work for me, you're going to need this today. Don't use it and stay, unless you see me pull it out. But I, to me, Shay, this really changed his mentality because he goes, okay, they trust me enough to give me a gun. I could shoot Gus right now and he could be dead. Yeah. And, you know, the, the whole point of the ricin is that he wouldn't end up in that scenario where he mm-hmm. basically dies on, on site, but he does still have the opportunity. And yeah. like you told Walter earlier, he, you know, first chance he gets, he's going to do it. So we, we, you know, he kind of not ruins that chance, but that chance runs out for him to use the ricin. Uh, but at the same time, like you said, he still has, uh, he has the pistol on him and obviously he's in with range of Gus. Um, right. in, the, in the meantime, uh, SUV pulls up with, three men the three same men who uh pulled off the heist slash um burglary to yeah yeah, the message they sent the message basically from um the los polos truck that was carrying the two men and you know they get there and they're kind of a this guy's familiar i I can't put a name on him but he's a very familiar actor i don't know if you and he you know he goes in and he mike says okay where's where's the rest of your posse and he goes this is it. This, like I'm, I'm the posse mm-hmm. and Mike goes, okay, well get in, get on in here. So sure enough, this guy goes in and you know, he's solely representing the cartel as I guess, you know, a, a confidant you could say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Gus says he sits down, they're, they're sitting there and he says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give the cartel a one-time payment of $50 million. And not too bad. Yeah. Not, not, not a bad day's work. And our relationship is over. No more crossing the border. No more nothing. This is my territory now. I'm not sharing it. No more violence. But basically, it's a peace and reconciliation. We end our relationship here. And we both go our separate ways. And it takes a moment. And Gus says, you going to respond? And this guy goes, "Mm, no. Like, we're just looking for a no or yes answer here. Yeah. And basically this guy's saying the car, the cartel knows what, you know, Gus knows what the cartel wants, either give it to us or, you know, you know what the, we know what happens in the latter. And by the vibes, you can tell that Gus has, Gus has kind of declined that offer. Yeah. It's just, this is not a negotiation, you know, yes or no. And he leaves, but we kind of see while he's getting into the SUV, he gives Gus a stare. And Mm -hmm. nothing happens in this episode, but it's a warning that you best take my offer or bad things are going to happen to you. Yeah. We, we, you know, obviously we've seen Gus take his shots at the, at the cartel clearly. 
Um, but I think they're going to be taking some back like they have in the last few episodes and even even a bigger stake. So in- interesting timeline that goes on with that, because, you know, you can kind of you can kind of get a whiff that there's a war going to be brewing, you know, pretty shortly into the season. Right. And yeah, so they get back. Uh, Mike get, takes his gun back. Jesse gives it back. But he, he says he's showing his loyalty. He's a trustworthy guy. And he, you know, Mike kind of just keeps saying, like, you're going to be on more and more drives, be on more and more of these errands with me if you continue to show me that I can trust you. And even goes as far as saying, you know, maybe, maybe your loyalties, you know, at the, maybe loyalties drawn at the wrong person. So he's very, you know, it's very evident that they're trying to get Jesse to, you know, basically cut out Walter so that they can get rid of Walter and that they can keep Jesse, you know, keep him as a cook or keep him as whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And not brainwash per se, but could try and win Jesse over so that he, he can become theirs. Because obviously, like we've seen with Walter in the past, Jesse is very loyal. And, yeah, you know, if, if they can – to a fault, exactly. And, mm-hmm. and if they can, you know, if they can, can guide that away from Walter, then obviously they kind of have their guy um, for, for the future. Yeah, we see beginning of this episode, Jesse's processing things. He's dealing with a lot. He's got Mike, who, who – Je- Jesse really generally likes Mike. And I think Mike actually is starting to like Jesse. I think we see that more and more, but – Mike doesn't say a lot, but he doesn't need to. He's kind of like that grandfather that you know loves you, but he doesn't have to say it. And so Jesse's dealing with Walt, telling him, kill Gus. He's like, well, maybe I want to work for Gus. And he's still trying to process Gail, and he's coming off doing drugs. So he goes to a rehab meeting, and his the guy who's always doing the meetings, who, if we can recall, he killed his daughter, or I forget it was a son or daughter, um, while go, trying to go out and buy cocaine he, or trying to go out and buy uh, liquor. He had cocaine on him, drove over with his pickup. Pretty gruesome story. But they're, they're at the meeting. He knows this guy and he says, oh, Jesse, you're back. Like, how's the, uh, how's the laundry going? And he goes, oh, yeah, fucking sucks. Like, it just, I hate it. And he goes, well, at least you're making a check. Yeah. Well, everything's not so good, actually, because last week, I, uh, a few weeks back, I killed a dog. And yeah, but basically, he's referring to Gail in yeah. this. It took, it took me a minute, and you know, I'm yeah. embarrassingly, I, I should have got this right in a way mm-hmm. uh, because I've watched the show, but also because it's pretty evident. And he goes, like, and I'm like, what? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. But yeah, no, he's, he's speaking about Gail in this, and he says, you know, he says, like, oh, I had to put, I had put him down. They're like, oh, he was, he was sick. Yeah. And Jesse's like, no, he, he wasn't sick. And he's like, oh, he, he must've been suffering somehow. And he, Jesse's like, no, he, he wasn't suffering. At this time, this, this older lady's kind of piping up, kind of getting a little angrier and angrier. Yeah. Must be a dog lover. But yeah, Je- Jesse's just getting more and more boiled with all these questions about, you know, why he killed this dog. Yeah. He goes, no, he's just a problem dog. And uh, you go, what? And she goes, how could you kill an innocent animal? And the guy's just like, Martha, don't judge. Like, we don't do that here. And Jesse is just off kilter. He goes, why shouldn't she? You know, all you people sit here and say acceptance and accept all your actions and all this crap, but nothing happens. She should judge me. And he goes, so you're saying I should just accept my actions to, to the to the main guy? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, you killed your own kid. You accept that? Mm. And he it's, goes, uh, it's, oof. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a bold it's a bold line by Jesse, but he's in a lot of pain. Uh, yeah. Like what you just said, everything you just described, he's kind of going through. And finally, he he kind of breaks it down and he says, you know, you do you even know the reason I'm really here? And he says, I'm, I'm here to sell you meth. Like I, I, you guys are just customers to me. You're nothing to me. And it's a, uh, with, you know, it, Aaron Paul just does an unbelievable job of bringing out this emotion and, yeah. you know, this, this anger and frustration and more importantly, just, you know, just complete brokenness is what he is, is, is basically what he's showing. Yeah. And they're all kind of just stunned sitting around him. Like, Oh my God, like this, this guy's fucked. Yeah. Yeah. He- I made you my bitch. You accept that? And it, yeah, he, he's just off kilter. And mm-hmm. clearly 
I think he had to do this. This was his, we mentioned him playing the game, but Mike's not the right guy to talk to about this. Walter wouldn't give him the time of day. He has nobody to talk to. And he basically had to lash out and admit that he killed another human being. We've never heard him say it, uh, Shay. He never said it out loud that, okay, I killed Gail in, in you know cold blood. I killed a human being. And he never processed that. And I think this was just his way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Being able to get it out. And another good thing is when he said, you know, d- you know, do you accept the fact that I am, I'm a bitch? The guy said no. And I think he yeah. needed to hear no, like, like you need, like that's, that's not okay. And you need to, yeah. you need to relax. And he just kind of, he barges off because he knows he's, he's in the wrong and basically just admitted to everyone there. He was trying to get their money and which is not obviously not a good look. Kind of, kind of want a badger or skinny P to be there just to kind of be like, yo, it's not cool, man. Yeah, you have to sell me up, bro. Uh, but <laughs> they're probably still in the crystal after all Jesse's wild parties. Yeah, true. We end this episode with an iconic Dean Norris, aka Hank, scene. In, in my opinion, I I love this. This was. It looks like genuine police work. Obviously, it's great acting. That's how you know it is. But Marie is with Hank. That she drives him to the DEA. He's got his walker, and he goes up with Gomi, and he meets with his. Uh, DA boss. He learns that Gomi's got a promotion. He's excited for him, but he's there to present information. And he starts by saying he goes over Gail's whole story and how he is a grade A meth cook and says, well, he kind of says, well, you got your Heisenberg. You know, Gomi pipes in. He goes, I thought that at first, but I don't, I don't think so. And he says, he shows him a copy of the steel meth equipment. And he said it's got brought in here by this company called Magical Electromotive over the last over the last couple of years. And it was shipped to here in the ABQ, Albuquerque, and signed by no, none other than Gail Benneker. So, you know, the, why, why, would, why would this company be dealing with a guy like Gail? You know, he, he, he's just a, an oddball. But the DEA is kind of like, nah, Hank, like you're, you're really reaching here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, until until basically he goes well you know there's they've, they've got this little sliver and and it's in american fast food and it's yeah. in los polos and he basically says owned by this guy and he says what if this guy this guy is our guy you know what yeah. what if because he's got the axe horses he's got the resource we don't know a ton about him other than he gives us money and you know basically DA. keeps he loves the DEA and he likes to keep his enemies closer, basically what mm-hmm. Hank says. And they go, no, Hank, like you no, you're you're again, you're really reaching here. You you gotta let this go. And Hank's all but and this is great too. He mm-hmm. he's he basically is attracting it. He's like, Oh, you're right, you guys, you know. I'm, I just thought I'd just bring it up, but it's just one last piece of evidence I gotta show. Yeah, he goes, Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I might be reaching, you know, and he, he I think he did this because he doesn't love his boss there. So he wanted to drag it out as much as he can. And he goes, you know, it's true, except that why were Gus Fring's fingerprints found in Gail's apartment? And that's how the episode ends. And it's another little mic drop moment. But uh, Hank, who's been doubted this whole time, has real evidence that he's showing. And it's, it's too much evidence to pass up and without talking too much about the next episode, Shay, the manhunt is likely going to be on for, for Gus and seeing if this guy is a, you know, a meth uh, mastermind slash, you know, evil empire here. Yeah. We get to see his response to, you know, to, to these accusations. Uh, this is a great episode because this of course uh, would be the mid season. So if you're watching this for the first time, um and following along on amc it'd be it'd be an unbelievable episode to watch because it'd just be like mm-hmm. oh like i get now i gotta wait to watch you know you know episode eight when that mm-hmm. that gets released but yeah no I, absolutely two great episodes um like i said but at the beginning two iconic lines from walter and the mm-hmm. you know i you know i i am the danger mm-hmm. and jesse of course you know I'm, I'm here to sell you meth yeah. but uh <laughs> well, you know what, what what are your thoughts on the episodes as holes and you know prop are they are you know are they better than they were last week what, what are your thoughts on that i really enjoyed both of these episodes um especially episode seven i thought it was really good with the the meeting and uh, 
Hank presenting his information, and even uh, Gus, uh, Jesse, Jesse's spiral slash, you know, coming to grips with what he's done. I found that really interesting. And, you know, the cards, uh, even, you know, the Tucker, uh, it's a small interaction, but I thought that was a really good scene mm-hmm. as well. And you also get to see what meth heads are like. So I think that's good, you know, good education as well. Just you know, be like, don't do this. Just read it. Street yeah. education. Yeah. yeah, but no, I, I enjoy, I really enjoyed both of these episodes. Yeah. Well, one thing I, I guess we kind of looked over is uh, after this meeting, and of course, mm-hmm. where Jesse getting the chance, he lies to Walter and says, yeah. you know, I, I never seen, I've never seen Gus. I, I'm sorry, but I just, he just, he just hasn't been on my radar when it was a kind of a blank lie to Walter, yeah. which kind of says, okay, maybe Jesse's swaying one way more than he is the other at this point. Yeah, that, that that little trust and, and him being there, clearly it meant something. And he doesn't have big motive at this point to kill Gus. Gail, he had to, to save his life, you know? And yes, he saw him kill Victor, but again, that was just out of show, to show a message. But also it, since then, Gus has done nothing to Jesse to make him really worry. You could say, you know, uh, Walter's been way more the, the unpredictable character here. While, just, uh, while Gus has just been cool, calm, and collective, and he's actually showing Jesse more trust and appreciation than Walter ever has. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Um, two good episodes, and uh, next, you know, we're, we're, we're at the back half now, but the season mm-hmm. four, you know, coming down to the wire, is, it gets really, really good. Um, there's going to be a lot more action, which I, which I enjoy, Mm -hmm. but, um, you, you talk, we talked a little bit last week about the, the, the many saints of Newmark. Did you get a chance to watch that Juggy? Did you go on Friday night and take a peek? No, I, I I didn't. I wish I did, but I ended up not going. Now I probably won't be able to see it with COVID restrictions or whatever. Um, hopefully not, but no, but did you get to, did you see it yet? No, look, looking forward to it. It's, it's on my radar. I don't think if I go this week, I think next week is uh, is a must. And uh, from from what I can tell, it's a it's a fans only kind of movie. Like you have to be kind of a true fan. You couldn't just be like someone who's like, oh, this this looks entertaining, or else it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So right. I'm glad like like someone that. for me. Yeah, me and you could watch it no problem. But you know, if you were to take somebody else and you know not have them watch the, you know, the iconic show, then they they might just be lost for lost for what's going on. But yeah, what's what's on the go for you for the rest of the week? I know we have a few more speaking points, and then uh, mm-hmm. hopefully get together in the, the great capital of this uh, province. Yeah, no uh, preview show tomorrow uh, with with yourself and Casey. We got um, we're doing a few podcasts for the football weekend on Thursday. Um, probably do some like mid uh, mid uh, quarter poll results in the NFL. Kind of teams I'm disappointed with, teams I didn't see coming, kind of thing. So do that. Talk about the wildcard games, of course, uh, over the next couple nights. And then, yeah, Friday, uh, I was, uh, Tali was texting me before the podcast. Her games are still on. So all systems go in Fredericton. I'm, I hope, you know, obviously people can make their own decision, you and Dawson, everybody else out there. But I know for myself, I will be, I'll be going. If Dolan's is open, I will be uh having a rolling rock with, with, with maybe we'll split a pitcher uh, after, after her game on Friday. So we'll, we'll see, but I still plan on having a fun weekend with, with, with yourself, Dawson and the other uh, hoodlums that decide to uh, take part with us. Yeah. I look forward to that as well, but uh, it's good. And I'm, I'm lo- really looking forward to speaking with you and our good friend Wardo tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll have some clashing differences. I know you like to be a little different and uh, I'm really, really, really interested to see who, if we align in our top tens or if we're, uh, yeah. if we're many off. So it's, it's going to be good. And uh, yeah, you can catch it all right here tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, check us out season preview tomorrow show tomorrow night. That'll be uh, available on the podcast feed um, tomorrow, tomorrow night, Thursday morning. So get ready for that. We'll have our top 10 players in the NHL. I'm sure we'll all be different. I'm sure It'll be a great debate, so I'm looking forward to that. But until then, we'll talk tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll talk soon.